Portrait photography. Okay. The number one question everyone asks right when they start taking photos is how do I make my work stand out? Well, the first thing that you can do is by distinguishing your own look. How do you do that? You play with the light, you figure out what kind of photos you like taking, you figure out what kind of people you like taking photos of. We're gonna go over a few ways that you can light your shoot with just a few lights on the cheap and while getting your own distinct look. So tip number one is get the subject to light themselves. So boom, ALM9, these things are beasts. And what you can do is you can get them to hold these each in one hand. They cost about $40, so they're not that expensive. But as you can see, it's a good way to get a different kind of approach to the lighting game uh, and a little bit more freedom with how you want them to move the lights around, get different angles. If you're in darker spaces or lighter spaces, you can control the dimness a little bit more. And the front of the light comes with a little plate that is attached to a magnet. You can put a little diffusion on there and it's a good way to get an even soft light held by your subjects. Now for this next one, you can use the M9s as well. But what I did is just took the front plate off, slapped a gel on there, and then got Pablo to hold them himself. Again, just like last time. But what this does is just allow you to kind of move around and get different angles, and they can move the lights around as they want. And it just kind of gives you a little bit more freedom, and it's quicker if you're in a rush to get a certain amount of shots in because there's no setup involved. So the beauty of having a small little light source like this is you can do all different kinds of things with it. So I tried out a couple of options, like I put it in a book for one shot, but I didn't really like how it turned out, so I just had him throw the book down and then try other things. You don't need light stands or setups at all, and you can kind of just quickly play on what you think is working and what's not working. Next setup is Christmas lights. Now. I thought they'd be selling them at the store, but they weren't because summer. Uh, so what they do sell are these kind of like Edison bulb type things in the garden section. So I kind of just hung those on a C stand. But as you can see, it kind of creates that bokeh, magical, flary look in the foreground. And then I had Pablo sit behind the lights. So it lit his face and you could see a little reflection in his eyes. It came out looking all right. now. If you use a shallow depth of field, you won't be able to tell what kind of lights they are. It keeps things out of focus and it makes a nice, warm, diffused light on the subject. So if you have to shoot corporate events or weddings or anything that requires like a, a nice setup and you know, it needs to be very professional looking, you can use one light. And so what I've been using is the 100D made by Aperture, and I use the light dome to create the big diffusion. It's a very nice soft light. But what I do is I just use this single light and move around. And as you can see, I can get all of those classic looks like Rembrandt, which gives you that triangle on the other side of the face that's kind of at a 45 degree angle looking down. Um, then you can get the split lighting, which is just from the side, which is very dramatic because it creates the shadow on the side of the face. You can do broad lighting, which allows you to kind of play with what side of the face you want the shadow to be on in relation to the camera. What this can do is if you're going to shoot corporate photographs, you don't have to carry around some giant lighting setup. You can just carry around a C-stand and a light. talk about shaping light. The beauty of doing this is that you have way, way more control over your image. Now, you've seen these in films where people use barn doors and they kind of, you know, only focus on the eyes or whatever it is, they're controlling the light a certain way. Well, what we did was we used a foam board, we cut squares in it and then moved it up and down on the light until we got kind of a pattern or a form that we wanted. And what this does is kind of lets you light up certain areas of your subject or kind of create whatever type of image you want. 
Now, if you're just by yourself, you can put it up on a C-stand with a clamp and set it up however you need. I had somebody do it for me, but the point is, is that you can do this yourself and you can cut whatever shape, whatever it may be, to fit whatever look you're going for. Lastly, go outside. And if you can't go outside, go near a window. And if it looks ridiculous, or if you feel ridiculous standing right up against a window, just remember, pictures only exist within the frame that you take them. So everything outside in the real world, no one's gonna know what it looks like. So if you shoot tight enough, it's gonna look great. Now, once you've left the studio and you're out into the world, look at all the lights that are given to you. So look at the street lights, look at street signs, any light that's coming out that's not yours, consider it a light source and a way to light your subject. Nighttime is a perfect way to find all the available lights that aren't yours and make something really great with them. So like signs and buildings or whatever you can use to light your subject. It looks really cool. A lot of the times they're very neat colors that you normally wouldn't shoot with. Being a good photographer is about finding the light and making something work with it. Whether that be natural light, artificial light, or light that you're carrying around in your pocket, like your phone. That about wraps it up today. I hope you like these setups. Comment below if you know a few more or some types of photography tips that you wanna see in the future. And comment, subscribe, you know the drill. I'll see you in the next one.